Hi Rail Lovers, welcome to Railwex Explained. After the video dedicated to amazing Marmaray project in which we discussed one of the greatest engineering feats that Turkey has ever attempted to realize and which includes the construction of the first physical rail link between Europe and Middle East in a form of a tunnel under the Bosphorus, today we continue the series of mega rail projects. In this video we discuss one undergoing railway project which should result in India's first high-speed railway line. It is called the Mumbai Ahmedabad High Speed Rail Corridor and it should connect the cities of Ahmedabad, which is a metropolis in the state of Gujarat, and India's economic hub of Mumbai in the state of Maharashtra. It is important to mention the total population of these two states is about 175 million people. Currently the fastest train on this line is the Ahmedabad Duranto Express, which takes more than 6 hours to reach Mumbai Central from Ahmedabad, running non-stop between these two cities at a maximum speed of 130 km per hour, which is 80 mph. After completion it will be a 508 km or 315 miles long, brand new high-speed railway line for design speeds of 350 km per hour, which is 217 miles per hour. Regarding the operating speed, it will be 320 km per hour, which is 200 miles per hour, which will enable commuters to travel this distance in only 2 hours. In recent years, India has undergone rapid economic growth, and along with this growth, a sharp rise in volume of passengers and goods has also come. In order to meet high demand, among other significant projects, dedicated freight corridors are being planned and constructed with aim to haul freight trains between Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata and other major cities. Regarding the passenger transport, which will be our focus today, the Indian Ministry of Railways in December 2009 has prepared a document entitled Indian Railways Vision 2020. In accordance with this document, pre-feasibility studies have been undertaken on seven routes that were candidates for construction of the high-speed railway. A report issued by the Expert Committee on Modernization of India's National Railways that was established by the Ministry of Railways designated the line between Mumbai and Ahmedabad as the first high-speed railway line to be constructed in India. A pre-feasibility study has been conducted by the experts from Indian company Ritas and French company Sistra in 2009. The study was 4.7 million US dollars and it was borne equally by India and Japan. The study was completed in July 2015 and it included the elements such as traffic forecasting, alignment surveys, a comparative study of high-speed railway technologies and systems, a construction plan and calculation of estimated costs. In 2016, India has set up a new special-purpose entity named the National High-Speed Rail Corporation Limited and trusted to build and operate this high-speed corridor. Mentioned, the Japanese Indian survey recommended a Shinkansen-style system, including the adoption of automatic train control and dedicated tracks. The alignment comprises of 460 km or 286 miles of viaducts, which is 90% of route length, and in addition there is 26 km or 16 miles of tunnels, 13 km or 8 miles of cut and fill section, and 9 km or 6 miles of bridges. A 21 km or 13 miles long tunnel connects Tane and Vira, out of which 7 km or 4 miles will be undersea. The undersea tunnel was chosen to avoid damaging the thick vegetation present in the area, but we'll talk about this later during the video. The line will have 12 stations Mumbai, Tane, Vira, Boizar, Wapi, Bilimora, Surat, Baruch, Varodra, Anand. Ahmedabad and Sabarmati. High-speed rail stations will be constructed either above or next the existing railway stations in order to provide transfer with the conventional Indian Railways network, which will continue to operate simultaneously. 
National High Speed Rail Corporation Limited is building a high speed rail training institute in Varodra alongside National Academy of Indian Railways. This training institute will be the training ground for all future staff on this high speed line, but also the backbone for future development of other high speed corridors in India. It was planned to start working in December 2020 and it will have much needed professional support from the staff trained in Japan alongside with Japanese experts. However, as a curiosity, the building of the institute that has been already constructed currently serves as a temporary hospital for COVID-19 patients. The total estimated cost of the project is about $15 billion, including the cost of train sets, interest during construction and import duties. The procurement of 24 E5 series Shinkansen train sets is also planned, and 6 out of those 24 will be assembled in India. It was agreed that Japanese International Cooperation Agency will finance 81% of total costs in the amount of 12 billion US dollars through a 50-year loan with an interest rate of 0.1%. This Japanese agency has also financed the construction of Marmaray project in Istanbul, which you can see in one of our previous videos. Anyway, the loan includes a moratorium on repayments up to 15 years and the remaining cost will be borne by the state governments of Maharashtra and Gujarat. It was also agreed that 20% of components used on the corridor will be supplied by Japan and manufactured in India. If you ask us for the opinion, this is a pretty good deal. Most of the line will be constructed on an elevated corridor to avoid land acquisitions which anyway has not yet been completed and the need to build underpasses. It will also enhance the safety by eliminating the need for level crossings and it will ensure no obstruction to natural flow of water. The decision to construct an elevated line raised the cost of the project by additional 1.4 billion US dollars, which is also exceptionally good deal. Here comes the final part. Due to complexity of the project, the construction works are decided to be allocated through 27 tender packages for which the award of contracts will be performed separately. Ok, now you think, you said everything, but not the most important thing. Has this project even started being implemented? Well, beside 148 tender components for different purposes such as geotechnical works, the clearance of terrain and other preparatory works, the National High Speed Rail Corporation Limited has awarded the first construction tender to the Indian company BL Keshyap and Sons for the construction of the Sabarmati Terminal in Gujarat, which should serve as a major multimodal transport hub facilitating passengers to have seamless connectivity with the Indian Railway and other transport networks. Construction works started at the beginning of 2020 and the total value of this tender was about 46 million US dollars. Let's now say a few words about the environmental impact of this project. And trust me, you will be amazed. The major aspect of Mumbai Ahmedabad High Speed Rail Corridor is the fact that relevant authorities were trying to apply a friendly approach towards one of its main stakeholders the environment. In the wake of rising concerns over the issues such as climate change, global warming and alarming pollution levels, the idea of putting India on fast tracks needs to be tackled with care and responsibility. Therefore, it seems like every measure is being taken in order to protect the environment. For example, without changing the location of Tane Station, the design was modified and 12 hectares of affected mangrove region got reduced to only 3 hectares. In this way, the National High Speed Rail Corporation Limited has saved around 21,000 mangrove trees and now only about 32,000 mangroves will be affected by this project. In addition, the company will compensate the mangroves at the rate of 1 to 5 by depositing money into the organization called the Mangrove Cell which will have the job to compensate the afforestation of the mangroves. This means that the number of 160,000 of new mangroves will be planted. 
Furthermore, in order to protect Flamingo Sanctuary and the eco-sensitive zone in Tane Creek area, a decision has been made to construct a tunnel up to 40 meters below ground in order to have minimal disturbance to the flamingos and mangroves in the area. Also, the route has been carefully planned to go through the 80 meters wide area between Sanjay Gandhi National Park and Tungareshwar National Park. Same 80 meters wide area is being used by many other projects like existing highway, Panvel Vira Highway, existing railway line, dedicated freight corridors and many others. The National High Speed Rail Corporation Limited has already awarded tender for transplantation of around 6,000 trees and have carried out transplantation of over 1,500. For the end, we would like to conclude that beside the great improvement it should bring to Indian transport to passengers and the fact it is done in a very professional and transparent manner, including financial agreements that are beneficial towards domestic economy, this project should represent a template for all other high-speed projects in terms of sustainable development. This should be enough for today's video, and as always, thank you very much for your attention, we hope you enjoyed and learned something new about the railways of the world. Don't forget to like this video, and for more interesting railway stories, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Goodbye.